Greetings, Internet. Welcome to But I'm Still a Good Person by Vince Nicholas. I'm Vince Nicholas. I'm joined by my sparkling wifey, Carolyn Nicholas. Hi. Hello, honey. Thank you for joining me on our sofa for our little program here. Okay. So you went to sleepaway camp with Lennox, and you guys went to Sly Park. It's a little town out in the foothills, about an hour 15 from West Sacramento, east of us. Uh, it was five days, four nights out there in the hinterlands. Uh, a bunch of kids from Lennox's school went, and then a bunch of more kids from a different school in Sacramento also went at the same time. Uh, so what are your initial thoughts, feelings, comments, reflections on the five days and five days and four nights uh, in the country, honey, out in the, out in the sticks? I'm back home. I made it. It was the hardest week of my life. Yeah. But it was also very rewarding and fun. And a lot of learning and growth happened for both Lennox and myself and all the kids, I think. Yeah. Just so, like anything in life yeah. uh, you struggle with. But when you make it through, uh, the experience sticks with you and makes you a better person. Uh, so here's some campfire stories with camp counselor slash chaperone, Carolyn. So this is going to be like a Charlie Rose Q&A without, without the black curtain. Because I know some of what happened because we communicated via text and talked for the past few days. Uh, but you have firsthand knowledge, obviously. So uh, let's get into it. The facilities, honey, the cabins, the mess hall, the bathrooms, showers, uh, what can you describe them? How, how, how did it, how, how were they? Everything was, it was actually very nice. Um, yeah. much higher quality than I was expecting. I thought everything was going to be disgusting and run down <laughs> and dirty. Dirty, Yeah. yeah. It, but it was really nice condition. Yeah. All the cabins and all the facilities were pretty clean. Yeah. And there was a janitor staff that came through. Every day they came in and cleaned our showers and our toilets right. in, in all of the cabins. Nice. Really nice. Because Sly Park is technically a school. Yeah. It's interesting because they host different schools in the greater Sacramento area. Like week in and week out. Yeah. But they are a school. They are part of the school district. And so they're kind of, it's like a mix between camp and school. So they kept telling the kids while we were there that week, you are Sly Park students this week. Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will not pledge allegiance to Sly Park. Uh, yeah, based on the pictures you sent me um, and us just talking, uh, you weren't glamping, but you weren't exactly Bear grills out there, man versus wild. <laughs> no. Um, it looked really nice. Uh, the mess hall, just shiny, clean. Uh, like you said, the staff is... They're older people, but they've been there uh, for years, uh, decades maybe. Um, so it's not like high turnover or whatever. Um, this is, it, it's it's like a school, but it's also a business or run like a business, um, it seems like. Uh, but yeah, it, you, you weren't like, uh, you weren't in tents. No, we were in decent, nice cabins. We had heating. So in uh, each cabin, the, the chaperones could control how mm -hmm. hot they wanted it. Did they want the heater on and off? Mm -hmm. They don't have AC, but mm -hmm. that's fine. We were nice and comfortable during the evening. It was chilly at night while we were there. Uh, we had perfect weather. It was like in the low 70s yeah. the whole week. It didn't snow, but there was a little snow left over, right? Yeah, there was some snow on the ground on Monday when we got there, but it didn't snow or rain the whole time we were there. Uh, perfect. Uh, how was the physical aspect? Uh, you did a five mile hike at one point, uh, the incline of some of the pictures of these hills you went <laughs> up, mountains, uh, the elevation affecting your uh, cardio, yeah. your breathing. The first day I got there, I could, the elevation was affecting me, I could tell. And also, um, I felt like there was spores or something oh, in the air yeah. because my eyes were really red and dry for the first couple of days. Oh. So it took time, a couple of days to like adjust to the elevation and the different like species of uh, plants or whatever Organisms. that are up there. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of hard at first. Um, 
We did two big hikes during the week, a yeah. three mile hike and a five mile hike. Eee. And in, in addition to that, they just, the chaperones, they have us working from early in the morning till late at night. Yeah. And we are on our feet constantly and we're constantly go, go, go with activities. It's a very regimented schedule. Yeah. Actually, the slide park, like they have their routines and the way uh, that they operate, they have it down. They, they've, clockwork. they've figured it out Yeah, and it's very busy and it's very regimented, but it works. Yeah. It, it it were the fly park grounds themselves to where all the cabins are and the classrooms and the dining hall. It's very big, so if you have to walk back and forth from place to place, depending on where your class is going, your little group is doing their activities. Mm. I got so many steps. <laughs> yeah, I was on my my feet hurt so bad all week long. Yeah, one day you got twenty one thousand <laughs> steps. Yeah. Um, Most days I got around 15,000. And then the day we did the five mile hike, I got almost 22,000 steps. The last night you couldn't sleep because you were in pain. I was in so much pain. Head to toe. From the specific hike that day? Was that the five miler? The last day when I was in so much pain, uh, in the morning I climbed a rock wall all the Uh, way to, I made it all the way to the top. That is another uh, hallmark achievement, accomplishment. Yes. But that, like, my muscles and ligaments and my hands were so sore that whole, just just from climbing up one rock wall, yeah. I, like, used muscles I've never used before. Yeah. And then that afternoon, we went on the five-mile lake hike. So yeah. I was a mess that night. I was wrecked. A few kids went home, like, they were sick. Uh, <laughs> they, couldn't, they couldn't hang. Wednesday, by Wednesday, Thursday, kids were dropping like flies. Mm. The sick bay area was filled Kids kept going there. I don't know if, if, I don't know if some sort of bug was spreading or uh, it's just it was very rigorous yeah. for the kids as well. Yeah. So I think they kind of maybe there's a little bit of ex- exhaustion going on. Yeah. I, maybe the kids weren't as aware of, of us as us adults are of like how to like make sure you're eating and drinking plenty. Yeah. To to get yourself through they such physical have, activities. They should have had a physical or. When I did backpacking camp uh, with the great uh, teacher, Eddie Lindros, who recently passed, rest in power, uh, it was eight days, seven nights of hiking through the uh, Yosemite. But there was a, a we, we all got together a few weeks before uh, the trip took place and we had to run six laps around the track. So a mile and a half in under 15 minutes. And I got fif- around 15 minutes. And I remember Eddie Lindros was like, hmm, it's a little slow. And I was like, oh, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, it's a physical, uh, physically taxing. Mm. Um, and I, I feel like they should have better prepared people or like maybe done a checkup or say, hey, uh, <laughs> uh, in, the, in the three to four weeks beforehand, uh, maybe hit the hit the treadmill, eat a little better. Uh, were, were there like... Bigger people, larger people who had who had issues. Yeah, there was there were people of all different sizes. There were a lot of kids that had inhalers. Uh, Tons of kids and some adults like had never hiked before in their life. Right. So they're good. the The staff there is good in the sense that like, if you don't have your inhaler, you can't go, or we have to go back and get it. Like mm. they make sure everyone they're aware of everybody's needs. Yeah. And there are teachers from the schools, the kids' schools that were there during the week with us. And there's us chaperones and there's a slide park staff person. Mm. But the slide park staff just, they lead the way. So they just take off at their own fast pace. Bunch of kids are fast also. They can keep up Uh, some of the adults. And then there's always youthful vigor, always a chaperone pulling up the rear of the group (laughs) and staying with the kids that are slower or need to stop and rest. Uh, But that was put on us. Like the slide park people didn't really seem to be keeping uh, tabs on who's getting left behind, who's struggling. They just went for it. Jeez. And then we were more responsible to make sure everybody was getting there. You were the, uh, the caboose back of the train. Um, Read the schedule. Like, okay, I've done camps. I did backpacking. And there's activities and there's plans and there's stuff to do. But there's also a lot of downtime when you're just hanging, you're chilling, and you find stuff to do. 
uh, or you're just chatting it up uh, with your cabin mates. Um, so the fact that uh, you were so scheduled and the kids were so scheduled, uh, I, I don't, I don't know that that, that seemed odd. Yeah, me. the only free time the kids had was after each meal. There was about a half hour of free time. Great cabin time, <laughs> or they could go play basketball up on the basketball courts. Yeah, but also. The kids, each cabin had to perform a skit on our last night. Uh, and the only time they had to do that was during their free after uh, meal time. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't always free. The heck? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, it's like over scheduling uh, kids these days with their soccer and mm. their little league. Uh, what about the mental aspect, darling? Uh, were there tears? You were in a different world. Uh, the lack of creature comforts. You were out of the cité. We're out in the boonies. Um, how did how did that affect your uh, your brain your noggin? For me, it was it was nice. I I was hardly able to be on my phone, and I enjoyed the forced break yeah. from social media. You missed nothing, by the way. <laughs> none of the kids had phones or right. any type of electronic up there. It was great. Right. Um, I didn't see any adults crying, but <laughs> the first night, art. Shockingly, not my, in public. Shock, yeah, shockingly, all the girls in my cabin didn't cry the first night. Everyone mm. just went to sleep pretty well. But the mm. cabin next door to us had five girls crying, mm. not sleeping, homesick, scared. Mm. So that was happening. What about dealing being away from me, from Frankie, from Luna? Uh, your bed, uh, <laughs> your your. Your, uh, your 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 routine did you miss it or it was it was just such a 180 like you would yeah. send me pictures and i'd be like i can't believe you're doing this <laughs> all over and over well even b beforehand for a few weeks beforehand i was like i can't believe you're going out there and then you're sending me pictures of all this dirt and trees and nature and whatnot and i'm like i can't believe you're doing that um but was was it was it shocking or did you just you just roll with it? It was shocking. It I was like, I was like what am I doing here? <laughs> but on the other hand, I really wanted to make the most of it. So yeah. I I just jumped in with both both feet and every activity and everything they had us doing, I just like put my all into it. Nice. Uh what about uh, more importantly, honey, how was the food? There's they serve it a uh, cafeteria style um uh, how how was the how was the fixins out there? The food was really good. Yeah, they have a kitchen staff that ah, is yeah. there all day long. Yeah, and they they cook the food and they are cleaning up the kitchen in between meals and then they start again for for the next meal. Yeah, and they're very good, very organized, very friendly. Yeah, the food was great. It's like cafeteria food, but. A step above. Yeah, you'd have like p pasta. You had French toast for breakfast. I was like, dang, that looks good. Dude. They fed us a lot of food. Cookies. It was, they had a full salad bar, mm. tons of sauces and toppings. and Coffee, tea. Coffee and tea available all day long yeah. for adults. Yeah. Uh, it was really good food. Wow. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Pictures you sent looked impressive. Uh it was, it's a far cry from someone named Cookie, like making some slop out of a <laughs> out of a wagon or whatever. Um, how was you were supposed to do a singing? Did you do singing? Was there a song? Did you read to them? Uh, you mentioned the plays. What was the entertainment like? The Sly Park staff. the The very first day, all of us chaperones got together with the director of Sly Park, and he gave us this whole little orientation, and he recommended that we read. A nighttime story to the kids every night. Hmm. He said they're not going to want it. They're going to say they're too big for it. Yeah. But trust me, it helps them like calm down. Oh, they yeah. they secretly would really enjoy it. Yeah. And every cabin had like a bookshelf. Yeah. With different books, and a lot of kids brought books too. So hmm. we did that. Me, I was in my cabin with two other chaperones, so three of us adults with twenty kids in our cabin. Yeah. And we each took turns every night reading to them. What did you read? Uh, the cabin had a binder with a few short stories. Mm. They were like two pages, and I read three of those, I think. But n was it was it like uh, was it like uh, the Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe? Was it 
Anything familiar? Anything no. popular? Calvin and Hobbes? <laughs> no. The Far Side, Garfield? It was nothing I'd ever heard of I before. See. Uh, I see here in my notes, honey, a parent chaperone left early. Uh, <laughs> can you can you fill us in on this uh, salacious details? One of the dads, he's a dad from our school. Yeah. Um, on Wednesday, I was I was chatting with him and he said, yeah, I'm going to go home. <laughs> I said, why? What? <laughs> and he said, oh. They they don't need me. I'm just I'm kind of extra, and sure. I, I I don't want to miss too much work. So he left Wednesday evening, and then his cabin only had two adults in it. Coward, because he was gone. After you told me that, I was like, uh, "Honey, why don't you come home early too?" Well, I had the opposite mindset. I was like, "I've been planning on doing this for months. Uh, I set aside the time. I'm here. I'm all in." But mm. he was like, kind of casual about it. Like, uh, yeah, I came. I saw. I'm ready to go. Sure. I saw this uh, gentleman when we when we went to go pick up. Uh, well, when I went to go pick you guys up, Lennox and and you uh, at the school uh, Friday afternoon, and uh, he was he was sizing me up. He was checking me out. You guys have identical haircuts. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, we're both in competition for uh, the number three best looking Asian man in West Sacramento. And uh, the leaderboard, which I have on a chart on the wall, it's it's going it's going back and forth. It's a it's a tight race. Uh, what about learning names, honey? You were having problems. <sighs> so first thing was uh, the girls from Lennox's school. You had to learn their names, and then how many girls total were in the cabin? So the the cabin was t- total how many girls? Twenty. Twenty, and then there were other two older parent ladies from the other school yeah they they mixed together our school and the sacramento school so cabins had kids mixed together our activity groups we were all mixed together yeah the two adults in our cabin my cabin were from the other school so i had never met them before yeah Uh, there's so many staff at sly park Uh, there's all these adults yeah i had to learn 20 kids names yeah it was that was so overwhelming i was really overwhelmed for like the first 24 hours yeah. and just like overstimulated there was too much to yeah. take in and rules to learn and how does this all work yeah but by wednesday i had learned a lot of the names so i was feeling more comfortable and that helped me interact with them better because i was able to address them by name or call to them yeah so that was good. It took me a couple of days, though. Why didn't they have name tags or I wish a learning all... activity? Yes. Name learning activity. I wish we all had name tags. Yeah. I'm bad at remembering names in general. Yeah. So, but I, I learned like 50 new names this week. Cool. Congrats. <laughs> You've forgotten them already, right? <laughs> um, so uh, you and the two uh, older ladies or whatever, uh, the two parents from the other school, um, you were in your own room. There was a single bed and then... A bunk bed, so three total beds. Yeah. Uh, you got the single bed. How did you decide <laughs> this? How they get it, the bunks? Was it like uh, the first episode of The Real World when they all <laughs> I clean this bed? No, it was exactly I- like that. Well, they had the girls assigned to rooms, but for us adults, it was first come first serve, and mm. we got there first. Ah. So I put all my stuff on the single bed. Cool. Uh, you had to bring your own pillow. Yeah. That seems a lot. <laughs> You brought two, right? Yeah, I can't sleep with one pillow. I need to sleep with two pillows. Okay. I brought a sheet. I brought an extra blanket. My bed was really nice and cozy looking. Mm. And I was the only adult that slept pretty well. Uh, except for that last night when I was sore. Uh, but I felt bad because we all as chaperones would chat every day, every morning. Hmm. How'd you sleep? Everyone slept terribly. And I was like, I slept pretty good. Did they say why? Was there a common reason? They were uncomfortable. Uh, the kids in their cabin were loud. Oh, uh, right, right. I was fairly comfortable, though. Yeah. And then you bought two uh, sleeping bags, one for you, one for Lennox. Um, and by the way, when you came home, you took over the laundry room. You did a gargantuan amount of laundry, <laughs> not just your dirty clothes, but you washed the duffel bags that you brought all the stuff in. You washed your pillows. You washed the sleeping bags. It was, uh, it was uh, quite I, quite the scene. Yeah, I washed our little backpacks that we had took and carried with us on our hikes. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything was dirty and it was... Well, you you like stayed up. I went to sleep. <laughs> yeah. You stayed up and continued your laundry. And then there was a, still a little more laundry uh, Saturday morning. Uh, but yeah, you cleaned everything. 
you took uh, my Adidas stuffle bag because uh, whatever you, you needed it, and I don't, I don't care. And you washed it, and that was the first time that bag has been washed. I've had that bag for 15, 20 years. I was like, wow, this, this is a uh, this is quite the deal. Uh, you were forced to socialize, honey. Uh, this is something that we're we struggle with making friends, keeping friends, blah blah blah. Um, what was that like? Were you were you glad to do it, and how how did it go? I was glad to do it. I realized I had to do it um, to make my week better. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be part of the chaperone fraternity. Yeah. Um. So I did. I forced myself to step outside my comfort zone. Yeah. And I, I made an effort. I took initiative, and it was good. I I felt like I bonded with a lot of the adults there. Cool. There were a few that I really clicked with, and they were like my buddies during the week. Yeah. And it was really nice because I got to know a few parents from our kids' school. Mm-hmm. And we've been here for a few years now, and I haven't really had that opportunity yet. Yeah. But uh, hopefully in the future, we're going to see each other again, cross paths. Yeah. And it's it was nice to finally like make a little dent yeah. in, social, in getting to know the kids' yeah. parents. This is, And it's a huge difference than like running a bake sale table for two hours at the school. Uh, to be out in nature on on your own <laughs> um, for 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 a week for a business yeah. week um, that that's something uh, well it, Sandra Bullock uh, said it in Speed when she said uh, when couples who come together through extreme circumstances never last but you you didn't get anyone's digits right I know I didn't I why not. I don't. I was nervous. Like you got to put it out. Can there, I have man. your number, baby? <laughs> well, why didn't they ask for my phone number? Because they were nervous too, <laughs> darling. Yeah, I, I regret. There's two moms in particular from our school that I really clicked with, mm. and I should have asked for their numbers. Mm. But hopefully, I see them again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, no phones for the kids. You were off the socials. You didn't meet Miss Jack S. Uh, but going back to your schedule, the texts were sporadic. Like I was busy at work, you were busy out there. Um, so we wouldn't talk for or text for a few hours. And then you would rattle off eight texts to me and I would rattle off seven in a row to yeah, you. Yeah, try to answer the questions. Right. Bring up new topics. Uh, it, was like a, it was like a Reddit thread that got out of control. <laughs> um, but you mentioned that you had no neck pain. Yes. No back pain. I always have neck pain, shoulder pain. It's yeah. because I'm... You're always looking down. I'm always looking down at my phone or a book or work, my work. Work, work from home. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of book, yeah. I brought a book with me to Sly Park. Mm. Didn't touch it once. Mm. I was way too busy. Uh, why not? Which book? It was a Judy Bloom book. Oh. Uh, and I didn't bring it. Oh. I, I didn't even get a chance to open it. It was a real book. It was a real um, book. But now you're back to uh, neck pain and <laughs> yes. back pain. Was like, well, I stretch you out on the bench at the gym this morning. I twisted your hips, girl. Um, how was the organizing, uh, the direction, telling a bunch of rando kids what to do, honey? How, how did you fare in that uh, aspect? I, st- I struggled yeah. with... Uh, like being a guide, being, being a, a leader, leader. <laughs> I, sh- I struggled yeah. being a leader in my yeah. cabin. But the other two moms that were in my cabin were more take charge. I, they felt like real adults. They were, yeah. they were both about 10 years older than me. Mm-hmm. But I felt like they were real adults, real moms. Like I kind of looked to them for guidance. Like <laughs> I would be standing in a room. There's a lot of just standing around yeah. watching the girls when we had a little downtime in the cabin. Yeah. And if anything got out of hand or something, we had to step in and kind of, okay, girls, stop doing that. Mm. But sometimes I would just be sitting there and then another mom would come in and she would see something that I didn't see or didn't think was a problem. Mm. So I was like, am, am I too laid back for this? Am I too just overwhelmed? But Not from the kids' perspectives. <laughs> uh, like... I was you I felt like I contributed and I was useful but yeah. I I wasn't the dominant uh, personality of the chaperones in our cabin which that, was fine. That, I was a little bit more laid back than they were. The alpha female. 
Uh, well, let's get to what's really important, honey. How was the musty factor? Were you musty? And if you need to cry, please do it into the microphone. But how was the overall? I, I imagine the staff <laughs> are musty. Some kids are musty. What, what's the, how, um, how was that? We showered every day. By mm. we, I mean the adults. Okay. We didn't keep track of who, which kids were showering or yeah. for how long. We were just kind of left it to them. And as the week progressed, by Thursday, it was so stinky. Mm. Me and the other women were like, we got to open all the windows. <laughs> Whenever we're here, we need to, as much as possible, oh, get this dear. aired out. Yeah. Um, some cabins were better than others. Or musty than so, others. I got musty, yeah. obviously. No, 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 my I, baby, no. <laughs> I did not shower. You, not you, lover. I did shower every day. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I would say because at that age, the last thing you want to do is take a shower. And for <laughs> your cabin, uh, 20 girls and then three adults, there were three showers. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, like when I was that age... I didn't want to take a shower in public because I was very uptight about everything. Um, so I would avoid I would avoid taking a shower at all costs. Uh, so I could see that factoring in. But uh, as a as the great uh, as a great woman once said, uh, when everyone is musty, no one is musty. And that great woman who said that is named Dixie D'Amelio. Um, but you came home, you showered instantly did a bunch of laundry, got rid of the musty factor. Uh, within your cabin, honey, any drama, any arguments? Uh, as Ludacris used to say, did they throw them bows up in the club? There were a couple of girls who had bouts of crying and were very emotional. There was a mm-hmm. little bit of – emotions got high and mm-hmm. heated. Mm-hmm. I don't know the context, but I know a couple of girls were kind of going at each other. Mm. Not physically, but like some words were exchanged, mm. but uh, they got past it. They got over it and then they were friendly again. Mm. That, that did happen a few times. Mean Girls, Burn, Book, Lindsay Lohan, ever hear of it? Uh, what about some of the activities, honey? Uh, Lennox and friends. Well, everyone had to try to build a fort. Uh, starting a fire oh, was yeah. an activity. How did that go? Some of the activities. It was like Survivor out there, dude. <laughs> yeah, we... Took about a ten mile walk through the through the forest Jeez. to an opening, a clearing, yeah. and the kids had to build shelters. Yeah. It was amazing. They all did really well. Yeah, I they, was impressed. They were given about forty five minutes, and super cute. They it was funny, so funny watching them carry around these big logs and <laughs> oh, dragging them around. And Tom Hanks and Castaway. Uh, what about the starting a fire? How about <laughs> Uh, nobody achieved starting a fire. Uh, I tried too. You're supposed to rub a stick on another piece of wood. Um, and this, our slide park teacher was walking around with a little, uh, a little machine that measured the heat. Yeah. And nobody got above like 150 degrees. You have to get to like 400 degrees for right. a fire to catch. Right. It was so hard. Mm. That's another thing. My muscles were used and tested and uh, stretched. Yeah. From head to toe. Yes. Yeah. Well, starting a fire, uh, is it the it's it's also called the the training program for PG and E, am I right? <laughs> uh, any life lessons, honey? Did you have heart to hearts with any of the uh, young gals or older gals? Um, anyone? Yeah, I I had heart to hearts with some of the other adults. Mm-hmm. Uh, not so much with the kids, but um, I was talking to another mom, and we were talking about how we both um, like had to put ourselves out there. Yeah. And um, neither of us were used to like leading other kids, or mm. um, it, so we were talking about how we kind of stretched ourselves that week, and we felt like we had grown a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Lennox had a really good week. He he was the first couple of days he was unsure. Mm-hmm. He was like, "This is fun, but it's also kind of not fun." Yeah. But then by the end of the week, he loved it. Oh yeah. He made a lot of new friends with the kids from the other schools. He yeah. bonded with his current friends. Yeah. Um, when you guys got home, he wanted to go back yeah. instantly. We looked at all our pictures when we got home and we yeah. were reminiscing. Yeah. Uh, he, he had never done big hikes like that. Yeah. He, he had never um, 
he, they did like jump roping and tug of war and he was really good. Everything he did, I was keeping an eye on him the whole time. Mm-hmm. Obviously I would try to, wherever we were, I'd try to like see where he was in the room and yeah. watch him whenever I was able to. He did so well at everything. So he felt good about himself. He was proud. He climbed, there was three different levels of difficulty on the rock climbing. Yeah. He did all of them. No problem. Wow. Up and down. He was really proud of himself. And he also mentioned that he wasn't used, he's not used to like talking um, a lot to other adults, hmm. like besides you and I and his teachers and yeah. grandma and grandpa. Yeah. Um, but he had a great time with his chaperones in his cabin and the chaperones that were in our activity group. And he really liked those those guys and so he said he he enjoyed like learning to talk and interact and kind of be friendly with another adult Hmm. so both you guys climbed the rock wall yeah all the kids did it like they could go over and over as many times as they wanted and then towards the end we had like five minutes left so i asked our slide park teacher she was in charge of every activity we did we had the same lady for Mm -hmm. every throughout the week her name is Otter because all the slide park teachers have nature names, of course. not their real names. Okay. She was great. So about five minutes left, I said, Otter, can the adults do it? And she said, yeah. So me and another another guy uh, threw on the harness and the nice. helmets, and he and I climbed up. Wow. We did it. Way to put yourself out there. I have I climbed a wall. Now, it was a real, not a play rock wall, honey. Uh, but one of my expeditions as a teenager went out there and climbed up a flat wall and I got to a point where I got stuck and I got scared and I started to freak out. But the guy who had my rope carabiner, however, the support, however it works, I forget. Um, but who kept me secure. He was on the ground. He said, Vince, just calm down and just look at the next spot where you need to put your hand. Uh, and Voila, it worked. I surmounted the, the the facade. I was like 127 hours, except I have both my arms. Um, but yeah, that was a very important, momentous uh, achievement in my life. Achievement unlocked way back in the day. Um, so on our end, on my end, honey, me and Luna and Frankie, I shaved my chest so you'll love me. <laughs> I ate expired salads all week because uh, I'm on track because we're going to Disneyland in less than five weeks, honey. Uh, I drank a soda pop and kept the can on my nightstand with no coaster underneath. That drives me crazy. I hope you can still love me. Every night I move your cup to the coaster <laughs> on know. your nightstand. I know. <laughs> I, uh, I wake up and I'm like, I wasn't there last <laughs> night. Uh, I fell asleep listening to Leo Laporte every night. Oh, you love that. You did that before you were a married man. Yeah, yeah. It was a good time. Uh, so to welcome you home, I got some Mylar balloons from uh, Dollar Tree. Uh, and 99% of them say happy birthday. Uh, and I didn't want three happy birthday ones. So I got one that said happy birthday, one, just a Paw Patrol one. And the one that said, congratulations on your baby, because (laughs) why not? My baby Lennox (laughs) and his achievements. (laughs) Your baby Frankie. Um, but Mylar balloons are a buck 50 each. Like what the heck? Dollar Tree moved up from a dollar to dollar 25. That's fine. But balloons, a dollar 50. So I said, well, why don't you put, put back one of those balloons? Cause I'm not going over five bucks for this, uh, but I thought the balloons were nice for were fun and festive and a nice touch. And I was thinking of buying you flowers, but Lennox isn't going to partake in flowers. Uh, but he walks by the Mar- Mylar balloons and punches them, and it shocks me. Uh, the, the boom, the sound, and I get scared. Same with Frankie. Uh, you're back, honey. You're back in in your regular life, our regular life. Uh, the Friday you returned, you started rearranging the dishwasher from the way I loaded it. Uh, Wrong way you loaded it? From the different way I loaded it. Uh, I'm back. Did Did you miss me whining about how much I hate my body? Uh, did you miss the monotony, the mundane, the ritualistic, 
just what life is? Are, are you glad to be home? Yes. <laughs> My life felt trivial, pointless, and dumb. So you would, you're making memories. You're doing something completely uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, and I'm like, uh, Steve at work said this and Bob at work did that. And I was just like, oh, my life is so, <laughs> so boring. So, uh, so not exciting. Well, I have a remedy for that. Yeah. We're going to start going hiking on the weekends. No. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm happy you went, enormously happy you went and, uh, created memories with Lennox and was there for him. I'm super proud you stepped up. So they needed volunteers. They they were whining about volunteers for weeks, months. And let's be honest, 99% of the time we just say, oh, we shrug our shoulders. Um, but you stepped up and mm -hmm. I'm super proud that you did that. Uh, something different. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was great to be able to share it with Lennox. Yeah. Watch him do all these cool things. Yeah. Um, when we got home, he told me he was so happy I went that I made it better for him than yeah. it would have been otherwise. So he, he enjoyed having me there. I loved being there. Yeah. And I loved seeing him with, I got to know some of his friend group better. We just kind of know them by name. We see them here and there, but yeah. now I know his friends a little bit better too. And that makes me happy. He said some of the girls told him, your mom is pretty. Your mom is so pretty <laughs> and nice. Yeah. Uh, with that all being said, honey... Never leave me again. <laughs> Never volunteer for anything. Neva. Uh, well, not for five days and four well, nights. That was pretty extreme. Yeah. Yeah. Paul McCartney used to have a rule with Linda McCartney that they would never go two weeks without seeing each other. Now, when you're Paul McCartney, you can charter a freaking plane from anywhere to anywhere in uh, 10 seconds. Um, but yeah, just uh, it, it was a long time. And we... We spend time apart. It's usually me going to uh, see my mom yeah. for two or three days. Yeah, you never go more than two or three days, though. Yeah, but this uh, whole week, I mean, I'm glad I had work to busy me, um, but it was, I was just wait. I was, it was boring. <laughs> it was boring, and I was just waiting for you, and you are half of me, you are half of my life, and yes, we have... You could call it a rut, if you will. I call it comfortable and familiar, and I would never have my life any other way. So I'm glad you're back. Um, do you have any desires to go back? You and Lennox were talking about going back. Heck yeah. We're going to go up and go for a day hike. Okay. We're gonna... <laughs> Me and Luna will stay here and go get ice cream. I have zero desire to camp in a tent, uh, but I would gladly go hiking or if there was like a cabin type situation, I would spend the night hmm. for sure. Airbnb. Because uh, you've been camping, but you've never been like this long, right? Or this extreme? Yeah. You've taken the kids up to the mountains. Uh, Yeah. As an adult, I haven't. I I myself went to a week long Monday through Friday, oh. um, church all girls church camp every oh. single summer for like seven years in a row. Right. So it was it was kind of similar to this. Yeah. Um, but as an adult, no, we've gone camping a couple times when the kids were little. Yeah. But I am not really a camper. Thank you. <laughs> Same. And I didn't think I was a hiker, but I really liked hiking this week. Yeah. I did. <laughs> okay. You and Len can go hiking. Okay. Me and Luna and Frankie uh, will stay and stare out the window, stare out the birds. Okay. Well, honey, glad you're back. You're glad to be back, right? Yes. <laughs> did you miss? And another thing was you called the first night or the first two nights, but then you couldn't even call yeah, me. Um, yes. I found a moment to call you every the first two nights. Yeah. And then, then they, after that, you were like, I'm well, busy. I got to go. <laughs> we had the last two nights, we had a night hike scheduled. So I didn't even get my my normal little break that night. Yeah. And then the very last night there was very busy. So sorry. I texted you. <laughs> I know. I know. But <laughs> what what the heck, Sly Park? Like, why are you so uh, overscheduled? I don't know. Well, are we done, honey? Yes. Okay.
We're way done. That's the end of the program. It's been fun, but not really. Let's all try a little harder next time. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, review, and rate, or don't. Do whatever you want. You're a grown up. Make your own decisions. Do what's best for your cap. And please be sure to use our promo code for Sly Park. We don't have a promo code for Sly Park, but you were not compensated. It was purely <laughs> volunteer. You drove out there on your own gas. You took a couple rando kids' bags because yeah. the bus didn't have enough room. Yeah. But like, you know what? What the heck? They fed me good all week. Uh, it was a lot of work. It was so much work. Yeah. All the chaperones were exhausted. Yeah. Like from the day one. Yeah. We were all like, oh my gosh. But they fed us and I didn't have to cook dinner. Uh, that was my they gave you compensation. Room, room and board. Room and board. I feel like they should give you a hundred dollar gift card to <laughs> Amazon or something. Like, geez, Louise, you no. you dedicated your life to to this to this uh, endeavor. I did, but it was worth it. Okay, we don't have a promo code for whatever. <laughs> Goodbye, my parasocial podcast friends. I love you. My wife and I love you. We hope you have a good day today and tomorrow. And sure, my wife may have been musty temporarily, but she's still <laughs> a good person. We're still good people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for caring. Thank you for sharing. Hope you have a wonderful day slash night. Oh, bye.